guys and welcome back to my channel. So, alright, first off, I'm using some of my new lighting and unfortunately it makes it so that you guys can see like these big circles on my glasses. So I'm just gonna put my glasses up out of the way until I need them. Um, unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to see very well so hopefully everything will be in focus. So, welcome back. It's been a while. You guys can probably still hear in my voice that I still don't have my voice back completely. I'm actually filming this on September 12th, so Wednesday, September 12th. I'm not sure when it's actually going to get posted, just I, I had some time and I'm going to try and film a couple of videos to get up for you all. So without further ado, today I decided to do a vlog style video because I wanted to show you guys what I have in my teacher bag. Now it's actually teacher bags. So, um, in order to like get everything on screen, I figured it was going to be easier for me to just do a vlog style for you guys. So, you're going to see me bending down to pick up stuff off camera. Just kind of bear with me with this. So, I have technically three bags that I bring with me to work. So, the main bag that I bring is the same one that I used last year. So, this is from 31. It's one that I ordered and I had shipped to my parents' house in the U.S and I brought it back with me when I came back from one of my trips. And I use that to take with me to my classes. Um, it's got a bunch of pockets, it's fairly big, which is awesome. The only problem is it is not big enough to carry everything that I need. So my second bag is one that I got in the middle of last year. Oh my gosh, and it's heavy because it's actually full. So this is actually a rolling document carrier and I will look to see if I can find it um, to link it for you guys on Amazon. I bought it through Amazon France but I'm sure they have something similar for Amazon US and I use this so that I can drag all of my bags up and I actually will stack my teacher bag so I will actually stack this bag on top of the rolling bag once I take it up to school just to kind of save my back a little bit. And then the third bag that I bring this year, so I used to bring my normal purse, and this year I've been bringing just this little backpack that I have, and I'm actually looking into buying a backpack that has sturdier straps just so they won't cut into my shoulders quite as much. Um, but I use that to bring things like my lunch and my water and all that kind of stuff. So those are the actual bags that I use. Now I'm going to show you guys what I actually bring in my bags. Um, and just be warned, it's a lot. So, I have first, foremost, and always my teacher Bujo, which I have done a flip through for you guys, and I will do another flip through again once we get a little further into the school year. So, you guys can kind of tell it's not, it's like a wide A4 or A5. It's kind of like a wide A5 size. So, I do keep this in my teacher bag. Um, I take it with me everywhere. I even will sometimes take it if, for example, if I have to go to the doctor and do a doctor's appointment, I bring this rather than my regular bujo because then I can see where I've got gaps in my day um, to like set up. So this comes with me a lot of different places. I also have my pencil case. So this is one that I picked up when I was back in the U.S. this summer. I went around, I believe this one's actually from tabletop in DC I think is where I got it so I did a stationary day in DC with my friend Jamie Sun Lanterns and I so guys don't laugh at me but in all honesty ever since I was a baby the first stuffed animal I ever got was a beaver and so it is my favorite animal I know everyone's gonna laugh but that's I'm like dead serious so whenever I find stuff whenever people in my family find stuff that has a beaver on it they will buy it for me and so I saw this when I was out shopping and I could not resist also like do you see how big this thing is it is gigantic which is great because I have so many pens so I've got my normal medium flares and I've actually rubber banded them together by type of pen because it was just going to be too overwhelming. So I have my big flares, I have my ultra fine flares, well medium flares, ultra fine flares. I have, these are my mild liners and if you guys saw in my video where I was using a yellow, yellow, a yellow Crayola marker, I actually did find my gold mild liner finally. It was just like hiding somewhere else. And I have my two, my green and my lavender pen for the week, so week A and week B. I have, all right, I need to set this down. This is the only problem not doing this on a table. Is I don't have anywhere to put stuff. I have a pair of scissors, because obviously. I have a ballpoint pen and pencil. And I finally bought a separate eraser so I can just keep it in here. I've got my clicker for the projector system. I have various page flags. I actually just have a couple of different packs that are stuffed into like this plastic bookmarky holder thingy that I had. I have my Inkjoy gel pens for all my classes. I have a permanent marker because you never know. 
my black flare pens, backup whiteboard markers. Like seriously, this thing is a never ending pit. I have a very small whiteboard marker, which is probably not, like it probably doesn't even work anymore. Um, and I'm gonna try and not cut the top of my head off. So I've also got my USB key and last but not least, white out. So this is probably one of the biggest pencil cases that I have and I bring everything with me because I use, if not all of it, most of it on any, and throughout the week I use all of it, but on any given day I might not use every single color. The next thing that I have in my bag are my grade books. So I actually just recently posted on my Instagram feed if you wanna kinda of see in them. I actually have three different books that I use for my grade book. So if you guys remember last year, I actually had a like grade book, attendance, and homework section in the back of my teacher bullet journal. And about 10 weeks in, I realized that it just wasn't working. I was gonna run out of space. And that was only having three classes. So partway through the year last year, I actually bought a grade book like, actually, I think I bought the one that was this size. So these two look identical, but actually one of them has 32 sheets and one of them has 20 sheets. So they are like different sizes. So last year I bought the 30, no, the 20 sheet one, I'm pretty sure. And I did that for the rest of the school year. What I didn't really, well, what I wasn't sure is having seven classes, I wasn't sure if I would have enough space to do all of my grades. And I really liked this size. However, for grades, it was kind of annoying, it was kind of small. So I ended up, the way that I'm splitting it up this year, and we'll see how this works, is I got one that is a seven class book. So these are Claire Fontaine. We have them everywhere here because obviously in France, Claire Fontaine is our, it's one of our companies. Um, so there's tons of different options for great books essentially. There's seven classes, nine classes. I feel like you might even be able to find five or 11, but it's not as common. Seven and nine is pretty standard. And then you can find the smaller ones. So these are actually already set up and I'm not gonna show you the front page because I've filled out some of my information, but it's got space in here for different information. And what I did is I took, they're already like, they pre-cut the pages so that you can see, like, so you have um, both sides here. And they actually have this to do observations, things that you wanna write. I'll probably just end up writing the students' names again so that it, once I get to this half, I won't have to flip through. Um, but basically, I haven't even filled this one out yet, so I don't mind uh, showing you guys. So what I do is I washi tape, the one corner with the color code for my class, I label the class, and then I'm doing these by trimester because I actually have three different sheets. So I just have up at the top here, T1, T2, and T3 for the three trimesters, and went on to the next one. So the left page gets the, was the washi tape for the class, and you'll see that I have all of my classes in here, and it's actually, it's a very nice little like rainbow situation once you see the ed edges of my pages. So this is going to be specifically for my grades. I believe I'm also going to add in bonus points because I do sometimes give the kids opportunities to earn bonus points that they can then put towards something else. I think what I'm gonna do is put it at the end. So for example, start from the right hand side here. Since this is by trimester, I'm not trying to fit the entire year on one of these pages. I think what I'll do is start from the left for the actual grades and start from the right for the bonus and see how that goes. So that as I use things, I know how many bonus points they have. So I have to kind of figure that out. That then is, that's how I'm doing my grades and all of that kind of stuff. Then the next thing I have are one for each of middle school and high, no, middle school and high school. So I have four classes in middle school, three in high school, and I just didn't have quite enough room to fit everything in this bigger one, unfortunately, so I split them into two. And I have washi tape the sides. I actually am probably gonna go back and washi tape the spine, just because when I put them in my bag, I usually put them in like this, so I can't see which classes they are. But essentially, and I'll show you guys the one for middle school, I have my color code on the inside here. I have done the, edges color coded as well and the way it works unfortunately I can't really show you this one because I have written the kids names in there but I essentially have enough pages or I'm going to try and cover I have pages that are labeled for attendance and I have pages that are labeled for homework so I actually have a system where for attendance I write down an A if they're absent 
L if they're late, and N if they've forgotten their notebook. Um, usually I'll do like a C if they've forgotten their agenda. It's what we call the carnet de bord. So it's like their agenda and what they, like if they get in trouble, that's where we write stuff in. It's correspondence with the families, that kind of stuff. So if they forget anything, I actually note it on the attendance. Then on homework, I have a system where if it's a straight dash, they didn't do their homework. If it's a one line, like a one diagonal line, they did half their homework. And if it's an X, they did their homework. So that way I can keep track. If I have kids who, for, for example, forget to do their homework multiple times, usually after three times, then I write a note home to mom and dad saying like, hey, they haven't been doing their homework. They need to, they need to work on that. So I like to have everything, even though we have ways of inputting attendance on the computer, I like to keep track of homework this way. I, and except for specific things, homework in and of itself is not a grade. I just need to keep track if they forget to do their homework multiple times. You know, forgetting their notebook in and of itself is not a grade. However, if they forget it multiple times, I need to keep track of that. So that's why I like to have this here. And I also, I just like to use this size because this is easy for me to pull out in class really quick, note down homework, note down attendance, and be done with it. Whereas, for things like grades, I tend to do that at home and that's why I want to have a bigger notebook with a little bit more space. So that is the next set. I also keep a very large clipboard in here. So on the inside here, I have keep a binder clip that just holds down these pages. I keep scratch paper with like to-do lists. I keep things that I need to deal with that don't go somewhere else yet. So I go through this clipboard periodically just to make sure I'm not forgetting something. And then on the right side, I actually keep a seating chart. So these are not my nice seating charts. I actually have ones that are typed up, but the names are written a little bit more clearly. And this is the way that, one, I learn my students' names. It's kind of frustrating right now at the beginning of the school year because some of my classes, they don't have a set seating chart yet, and so the kids move around. So it gets kind of dicey when I'm trying to figure out kids' names and they're not sitting in the same spot that I have them on their seating chart. I also use it to keep track of participation. And this year I'm using a system of so we, I have what's called a behavior credit and a participation goal. So for the participation, they're trying to get up to 20 points in order to get you know, their, their participation grade for this trimester. And then I also have a behavior thing where things like forgetting homework, forgetting their materials and that kind of stuff are going to go into giving them losing points essentially. So what I have to do then is take from my grade book all the notes that I have on, you know, if they forgot their notebook, if they forgot their homework, that will then translate into a point on here. And it's really just to hold them accountable. It's not going to, it's not a heavily weighted grade, so it's not going to really, it's not going to change a whole lot in terms of their actual grade, but it's just to remind them that they need to be responsible and they need to remember to do, to do their work, to, to not forget their materials and stuff like that. So I find that using a seating chart method with um, like tick marks to keep track of things is just the easiest way and it helps me learn their names. So I keep everything in here and I actually do print out a new seating chart each week so that I have enough room to do the points for that week. Next, I have a envelope, plastic envelope, and this is where when I'm doing my lesson planning at home, I will usually print out the original copy of whatever worksheet I'm going to be giving them, and then I will put them in here, and this is my I need to make copies of stuff folder. Um, it also sort of doubles up as I'm not sure what to do with this yet, and I don't have a place for it, so it's just going to stay in here. So it's kind of both of those things, but normally it's going to be things I need to make photocopies of, and it just keeps it from getting wrinkled, and then I don't have to go through my level folders to figure out, oh yeah, I need to photocopy this, I need to photocopy that. I just have all of my photocopies in here, and then once I've done the copies, I put them in their appropriate folders. Next, so still in my still in my teacher bag. So all of this stuff that I've shown you is going to go in this bag when I take it up to school. So next up, I have this folder where I keep extra copies. So for example, at the beginning of the school year, I gave out a ton of papers like getting to know you surveys. There was a video homework that they could do for a bonus point, just various things like that, any like class expectations. So things that I have that are either common between all of my classes or specifically for my seventh graders because I have two classes. I don't want to keep extra copies in one or the other of their class folders. So I put them in here and I always have this with me. So if a kid's like, oh, hey, I don't have this, I can check and see if I have an extra copy. So keep extra copies in there. And this is where I keep things when I make photocopies. If I don't have all of my folders with me, for example, I don't have that class that day, I have, I've left the folder at home, then I keep all of my photocopies in here and then I go through this 
this folder and I put them in the correct spot so that I know, so I have them ready for class. Then I have an A4 size like term jot book and I'm actually almost done with this one so I actually I do have a second one because this is one that I actually got and the reason why it's this lovely taupe color is I got it super on sale I don't know how much they normally are but I think I got it for like a euro um, one of the day one of the times that I was in Paris shopping and so I just do like for example I have notes in here for my curriculum for the year I had notes from meetings at the beginning of the school year just like all kinds of random stuff where I don't have to write neatly so once I finish this I do have another one but I will probably end up using the note section that's in the back of my bullet journal just for now since I had already started this notebook last year I'm just finishing it up so I don't waste paper I keep a little mesh bag this is from like an airline basically with binder clips because that is how I organize all of my photocopies so that stays in there I have so I move from class to class and I used to work out of my pencil case that did not work very well. I was always like just constantly searching for the pen I needed. So I just bought this cheap little black, like it's metal of some persuasion. So it's pretty sturdy, but I just throw it in my teacher bag and I pull it out and I put it on the desk of whatever class I'm in. So I've got all of my whiteboard markers in here, but I also will pull out any of the pens that I use during class. So I usually will have my pencil. I'll have my black flare pen. I have whatever flare pen for the, like the color code for that particular class. And if I need something else, and I just keep this on the tape on my desk so that I can grab and write however I need to and I, it's just worked out really well. Um, that's one of the downsides of not having my own classroom is that I need to be ready to like pick up and move every single hour essentially. So this has made my life so much easier. Then I've got this. So I actually got this with my bag. It was, I think if I, you know, bought the bag that I purchased, I got this like half off or something like that. So it's just like a little in bag organizer, which is nice because I just keep in all the little things that I don't want floating around in the bag. So it does have pockets on the side, which I don't think I even have anything. I used to keep stuff in them, but they got really bulky and so it kind of fell over. Yeah. I don't even have anything in there but it does have this big inside section with some pockets so I keep things like my egg timer so for example if I say all right you guys have 10 minutes to do this activity I set an egg timer and they know when it rings that we need to move on to the next thing I have a stapler I have extra glue I've got tape I have various so I'm gonna have to well here I have paper clips just in case. And then I have, see if I can find everything in here. I'm not gonna pull out all of them. Well, actually I'll try and pull out all of them. Let's see if I can fit them with my hand. So I have self inking stamps. So these are my favorite thing because I check the homework. So if I assign some kind of written homework, I will go around and check because otherwise, how do I know if I've done it? And this way, if I have a kid who comes up and says, oh, I, you know, you didn't check my homework. Well, if you don't have a stamp, that means you didn't show me and that I was going around class, which means either you were absent, in which case I'll accept it because, you know, you weren't there or you didn't have it. And in that point, in that case, I'm not going to change it to say that you did. So I do the stamps for that. I also will sometimes do stamps on tests and stuff. So I have a gold star. I have smiley faces. So I have a green smiley face, a an orange like straight face and a red frowny face. Now, I will be perfectly honest, I pretty much only use the green smiley face. I don't really like doing sad faces. Um, it came in a pack, I didn't really have a choice, but I, I try and do, if I'm gonna do something, I try to make it be positive. I just keep these in my bag in case, but I honestly, I really don't use the orange and the red one that much, if ever. I also picked up last, when I was on my last trip back to the US, these stamps that say, oh yeah, great job and awesome in blue, red, and purple. So I will do these as well. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in here. I think that is it. Yeah, so this is basically just my bag of things that are just loose and kind of floating around. Then, in my pockets, oops, so it has three pockets in the front, two in the back, and then a mesh pocket on each side. I don't usually keep stuff in the mesh pockets because it falls out pretty well, pretty easily, but I keep a Tupperware full of sticky tack. I keep my keys for work, and I keep Kleenex and chapstick, and, oh my goodness, dropping, and breath mints so that I have them. Oops, all right. 
And then in the back, I keep a cloth bag, just folded up in case I ever need another bag to carry stuff home. And this one is currently empty. So that is everything that I keep in my teacher bag normally. Now, when I have class, I will put in the folders for my class. However, to take things up to school, I usually keep them in, oh my goodness, in my rolling bag. So in my rolling bag, oops, oh gosh, I just dropped stickers. So in the front pouch of my rolling bag, I keep stickers. And I dropped my stars on the floor, which I'm just going to drop the smiley faces. Whoops. I've got actually even more stars. I have star and smiley face stickers dropping everything. I have star and smiley face stickers galore. So I use those a lot of times on tests and stuff. It's too much work for me to do it when I'm going around to check homework. That's why I like the self inking stamp. It goes faster. But for tests and stuff, I'll sometimes use stickers. I have... Another set of stickers that I got last year that I'm probably about halfway through with, so I'll work on finishing those up. I have a cable and an adapter so that if I ever wanted to use my laptop to hook up to the projector, I can. Full disclosure, I actually don't. Um, last year, we had PCs, like desktop computers, in the middle school, and it was too hard to get to that cable to switch it out, so I just used that computer. This year, we have all new computers and their laptops, so it would be possible to switch it out. However, the computers work a lot better than they did last year, so there's not really any need for me to, to hook up my own computer. Last thing I have in the front are little, so Faber-Castell makes these markers that are like a marker marker on one side and a stamp on the other side. So let me show you, oops. So on this side, for example, it's a little like swirly Q thing. Um, so I use these sometimes to do homework as well. I've just been keeping them in my teacher bag because I have so many stamps that it just wasn't really necessary. And then the bag, oh no, there's one more thing before we get to my class thing. So I keep this gigantic folder um, I would like to have a smaller one, however, this is just one I already had at home, so rather than buy something new, I just decided to try and see if I could use this. So I have tabs on here for general info classes, the class that's my homeroom class, and general resources and originals. So basically, I keep in front of the, in front of the first tab, I keep my schedule, I keep the contact list for all of the English teachers at my school, and I keep our general calendar because we get the calendar for the entire year. In the general info, we actually get like um, best practice sheets kind of for certain things. So like how do, we, how do you plan a field trip? What do you need to do for back to school night? Different things like that. So I like to keep them in here so I have them. Then in my class section, I have the class list. So either actually usually both pictures and the actual list. So I'm not going to show you guys that. So I have um, different, it's actually just like a see if I can show you here. So there, it's like a, um, what do we call, what do we call these? Sheet protectors. So they have different sheet protectors that are just on like a spiral bound notebook. And so I put my class list in there and then I have other information for my homeroom class. And then these are like general things. So like disciplinary or whatever, stuff that I have for all of my classes that isn't level specific, that if I ever need to make copies again, I have the originals in here. So this, I just hold on to. I don't really bring it with me to class, but I do usually bring it with me to work just because if I am talking to another teacher about a class that I don't have that day, I still have the class list with me. Now we're getting to the bulk of my actual like lesson stuff. So what I've got is, pull out one set, so I have a thin like one inch binder, okay? So a thin one inch binder and a folder. You will notice that they are both the same color for each of my classes. So this matches my color code for everything. And let me tell you, sometimes it was kind of hard to find things that, that were the same color, either the same color between the binder and the folder or the same color as my color code, but I got as close as I could. So the way that I usually work this is for example this particular class I actually had the same level last year and I'm doing the same first unit with them again this year because they had never seen it before so what I did is I went in my 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 storage you know all of my stuff from last year and I pulled out all of the things that I did with the class last year put that in the front then I have oops somewhere back here 
there we go. Then I have my lesson plan, so just kind of a general over, overview. Now I do use PowerPoints in class to show them. I show them an agenda that also has their homework for the day, and then I try and post as many of my handouts in like either PDF or JPEG form on the PowerPoint so I can show them this is what I'm talking about, here's what you're going to do, added instructions. Like I try and use that so that they have something written to kind of hold on to because in a foreign language class, it can be kind of hard if you don't understand what's happening. It can help you figure out what's going on if you can also see it written down. So I do try and do that for my students. Um, because of that, my lesson plans don't generally need to be very detailed because I also have it on my PowerPoint. Uh, this year I've been using Google, Google Drive in general to organize everything. So I just pull up my Google Drive whenever I get into class, open up the PowerPoint for that class, and I'm ready to go. So I do have that and then I do keep a tab on the current day and I also have in the back class lists. I have a sheet with all of their birthdays and anything that comes up, you know, for example, when we have meetings to go over grades and that kind of stuff and there's comments and notes and things that we have to write down, I do keep that in the back section of the binder. So I'm not going to show you that, but I keep all that stuff in here and then in each folder. I keep any of the photocopies that I'm going to have for class. So, for example, this is the only level, or this this particular class is the only one I have for this particular level. So if I ever make photocopies, and I usually try and make two or three extra ones just in case, I throw them in here, and if ever a kid has forgotten it, they can ask me. Now, like I mentioned, for things that are for all of my classes or for my seventh grade classes, I will keep in that black folder because I have multiple kit, like multiple classes that could ask for it. But if it's something that's specific to a class, I will keep any extra copies in there. And anytime I make photocopies, I just throw it in this folder so that I have it and I'm ready to go for that class. So I have, oops, all of my levels here. So the way I've done it is I have two seventh grade classes. So I have one in this kind of lighter blue and one in the darker blue. Whoops, one in the darker blue. And this is actually one where you can see they were not exactly the same color. I have my next grade level up is purple. The grade level after that is teal. And you can tell this guy is, I've got so many copies in here right now because I just did a bunch of photocopies while I was at work. Then that's all I have in middle school. High school then I have green and this is another one where they're not the same color green, but so be it. So these are my 10th graders. I have my 11th graders are pink. And I have an 11th grade honors class that is orange. So you can tell, like, I function by the color code. I use it for everything. I label my timetable, my schedule with my color code. When I set up my bullet journal in my weekly, I use the color code. Even if I know my schedule, I still label in my color code with the name. So for example, my seventh graders, I'll write which seventh grade class, but even if I know, I'm still going to write it in the appropriate color of blue just so that I can see quickly at a, a glance exactly what colors I have. I use my color code with my pens, my folders, like everything just to make sure because I have seven different classes, I don't want to like confuse myself and show up with the wrong folder or you know the wrong documents or whatever. So I try to rely heavily on my color code. It's the first thing I do for the school year just to make sure that I keep it clear in my mind. So that is definitely one of the biggest parts of my organizational system. I am thinking that in the future I might move away from the binder system to something a little bit smaller just because even though it is a one inch binder it is still kind of big. The thing I do like about it is that I can use sheet protectors and then after I finish the unit I can just move them to a different binder and I don't have to take the papers out I just move the entire thing and put in like empty sheet protectors to then do the next unit. I'm still kind of playing with that just with three classes last year it worked fine with seven classes that's just a lot more space the folder system for photocopies though i think i'm going to keep it works really well i then will keep different things for example either by class or by by section of copies i will use binder clips to organize them so i don't have just like bunches of sheets of paper in a folder but yeah that's that's kind of my main system so those are my two main bags that i use the other bag that i do bring up with me is instead of a purse oh goodness I will bring this backpack so it's not fully packed right now but I usually keep like I keep my wallet I keep some snacks I keep sunglasses and 
an umbrella in here. I keep in the front pocket, I usually have Kleenex and I've got my headphones and um, chapstick and that kind of stuff. And I also will bring a water bottle with me. And this is honestly just so that if I ever, so when I go around to class, if I decide I want to bring my water or what have you, then I just have my backpack. But also it just sort of evens out my weight, the weight on my shoulders a little bit more. I was bringing a crossbody bag last year and it worked fairly well, but it moved around more. So if I was bending over, it would fall to the front kind of thing. And so I just, I'm, I'm experimenting this year since I have so many more classes. And sometimes if I bring up everything, so if I have you know the majority of my classes, I can't even fit everything in those two other bags. So sometimes I'll bring like that big gray folder that I have with all like the, the sections. Sometimes I'll throw that in my backpack. So I can still fit A4 size things in that backpack. Not very much, but a little bit. So that I'm just trying to, since I know I don't travel light, I'm just trying to keep things as light as possible, you know, and so for example, when I bring that document case, I don't bring it with me to my classes because I have to go up and down stairs. So I will bring the, my shoulder bag with me for the different classes. And if I ever need to, I'll carry stuff in my arms because it's going to, you know, wrench out my shoulder more if I have to keep lifting that, that rolling bag. Obviously, I can't help it when I come home because I have to walk up the stairs, but at least for school, I do try and minimize how often I'm picking that bag up because it is rather heavy. But yeah, that is essentially what I've got for you guys. I know this was a long video, but let's be honest, I bring a lot of stuff with me. I get like almost every day that somebody sees me, somebody jokes that I'm moving in or that I'm going on a flight because of how many bags I have. But like, this is just the way I organize my life. This is what keeps me sane. Like, that's just the way it is. So yeah, if you guys have any comments or questions, let me know. I hope that... My voice wasn't too distracting. I hope I'll be back to normal soon for future videos, but I just wanted to get around to actually filming this one for you because it's been on my list. I've been wanting to show you guys what was in my teacher bag this year for so long, so I finally got to it. So I will see you guys in my next video. Please think about giving this video a thumbs up if you, if you liked it or you found it helpful, and please consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos in the future. Bye.